guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be planting some blueberries and strawberries in the galvanized troughs that you can see right behind me. In fact, you can see all of my supplies here. I've got the compost, I've got some strawberries here in the gator, and then I've got my blueberries already set out. These are the galvanized troughs that I had the Globemaster alliums in this spring and they were absolutely gorgeous. And this is actually not where I intended on putting the troughs, but they kind of work great over here. Uh, I can hook the uh, water, like their drip system, right into the drip system with the orchard that's right beyond the fence there. And I think it's just gonna be a really nice location. They'll get plenty of sun and all of that. So I thought we would just talk about blueberries in containers because that's the only way that we can grow them here in our area because our soil pH is so high. Blueberries typically like a pH of about like four and a half to five and a half, which is really acidic. We have areas here in our valley that clock in like at 8.2. I mean, really, really high. And when you plant a blueberry in that sort of condition, they start to yellow, they just grow really poorly and you hardly ever get yields. I remember my parents trying to grow them for years in the ground, like in different locations in their garden and it just wouldn't work because even our water is high alkaline. So anyway, um, when we grow them in containers, we can control a little bit better what soil they're in um, and that kind of thing. I can't control what the water has in it, but at least I can add in some land and sea compost and some soil acidifier to kind of help things out from the very beginning. So you can see that the troughs already have soil. Now, when we initially planted these up last year, we put the bark nuggets at the bottom bad idea. It just did not work. I know that there's a lot of different suggestions on what to use um, as a filler in, in things like this, but in this case when I'm growing perennial shrubs that I want to have live in these containers for a long time, we go soil from top to bottom. Um, it's better for moisture control and um, nutrient amount and then also uh, just longevity of the plant because they have a bigger reservoir to grow in. And the drainage just was never right last year. It's like I had, I don't know, maybe like this much of it was bark nuggets, eh, maybe like that much, and then half of it was soil. For annuals, that should be plenty of root room, but the water just shot right through the soil and we ended up with a lake right near each one of these troughs. It just never worked out very well and the top was always dry. So soil from top to bottom and then I have the Espoma organic potting soil in there and I'll be adding in uh, the compost that I just showed you and soil acidifier to help bring the pH down and kind of keep it down. And it's something that I'm gonna have to continually add into the soil like on a consistent basis to keep that acidity level because our water will eventually uh, flush it out and bring the pH right back up. So it's not something that I can just do once and then expect to not do it again. Now the strawberries that I'm planting around the base of these blueberries, they prefer a little bit higher pH, like uh, I think typically between five and a half and six and a half, which is still on the acidic side. And I know I'm never gonna get the soil down to four and a half range. So I think that this is kind of going to be a match made in heaven. I think it'll be kind of perfect for both of these crops. In terms of placement, blueberries want full sun. So do strawberries. So anywhere that they can receive six to eight hours minimum of sunlight and they'll be happy. Different climates, a little bit different though. If you live in a very mild climate where you've got a lot of rain and cloud cover, you'll probably want to put them somewhere that gets sun as much as possible. Here in the high desert, we can put them in a spot that gets morning sun and then a little protection in the afternoon and maybe a little protection from wind which they will not receive out here. They're gonna get full sun all day and the brunt of the wind. But I think if I keep the water on consistently, if they get enough moisture, we should be okay. So let me show you all the varieties I have here. I think I've got four different varieties, maybe five. Uh, this is one of my older varieties here. I'm going to take it out of this pot and pop it in with one of these other groupings here. Um, and you can see that Benjamin has already stripped every single blueberry off of that plant. And then all of these are new. So these are just completely loaded with berries and he comes out here, because we've had these for a few days, he comes out every day and checks to see if they have ripened yet. But they're looking really nice. Um, there are a few here on the end. So there's this one gallon size one here and then these three right here that I wintered over from last year. And you can see even with our water, like one, it needed to come out of its can, but then with our high pH water, th this is what they do. They start to yellow and look kind of sad. So I'm hoping that I, got on it fast enough and that that will turn around and they'll be okay. So to start, all of these varieties I have here are termed high bush type. There's high bush blueberries and low bush. I've got varieties uh, called blue crop, blue gold, Spartan, and Patriot. So your low bush type blueberries are 
also called wild blueberries, typically zones three through seven and a lot smaller shrub at maturity. So typically right around a couple of feet at the most and they'll spread out a little bit and their berries are much smaller but very intensely flavored. And then your high bush varieties grow taller, higher. So usually six to eight feet tall, sometimes a little bit bigger if they're planted in the ground. Mine will not reach that size. I've never had blueberries in containers get that enormous i would love it if they would because some of these will produce like 10 to 20 pounds per shrub at maturity if you could get them that big which i would absolutely adore um, but they usually have bigger berries typically more mild in flavor and right around in the zones like four to seven and i hope that the wind isn't like i'm wearing a microphone today and trying out a new camera so hope everything is going out okay and i'm wearing uh, warmer clothes you guys we woke up to wind and uh it's like 60 something right now which you know, at the end of winter, it usually feels balmy and warm, but when you're coming down off of 100 degree days, it feels kind of chilly out here. So the blue crop and blue gold varieties are new to me. I usually grow um, Spartans and Patriots. They do really well. Like I think Spartan is one of the best flavored ones I've had, and they're typically like they bear really well, even under adverse conditions that we have here. Uh, so I think what I want to do though is get these all planted, get the drip set up, show you the strawberries, and then we'll talk about each of the varieties individually and kind of go into a little bit more detail. So the strawberries I have here are the Buried Treasure White and Buried Treasure Pink. I noticed, oh yeah, look at this. Some of these already have some berries. We can't tell Benjamin. He'll pick them at this stage. They don't even need to be dark red <laughs> and he'll eat them. So I've got 10 strawberries per container and I'm thinking of just kind of dotting them around like starting here and kind of ringing around to the same spot on the other side. We won't plant them directly in the back. And then as far as my drip supplies go, so the grid for the orchard for now until we get a sprinkler system set up in here um, is perfect because I can just tap right in here, run a tube quarter inch tube underneath the fence and it will pop up over the side for all of these. I think that'll work out great. And then I've got the quarter inch brown tubing. Let me show you actually. So this is the quarter inch supply line that will pop into that half inch width. And then once we get up into the tubs, I'll use this right here. This is a six inch spacing uh, drip tubing and I'll just kind of run a ring of it around inside the tub. Okay, so I'm just gonna get to work. All right, so I put one bag of land and sea at the top of each one of our troughs here, and now I'm gonna add the soil acidifier in. And what I think I'm gonna do, there's actually specific instructions for blueberries telling us to apply in the spring. For new plants, use one and a quarter cups. For established plants, two and a half. Spread evenly around the plant, out to the drip line and water well, and then repeat in 60 day intervals. So anyway, I'll add one and a quarter cups per plant and then just plan to do it again here soon. One down, so I've got two blueberries in this container. We've got a blue crop and a blue gold, and then I used four of the buried treasure whites. So there's one there, two, three, four, and three of the buried treasure pink. So I only used seven strawberries when I thought I was gonna use 10, um, but they're quite large already. So I don't wanna get things too much. Oh, I put one buried treasure white in the center just for good measure, but I didn't put any around the backside because I think in the end, they may be a little bit too hard to access. And then you can see our drip. I was able to eventually pop into that half inch supply as soon as the drip system turned off to the orchard. So it comes up the back here and then I used a straight coupler right here into the brown and then it goes just around and ends right here, there's a little quarter inch plug there. I use landscape staples to kind of tack it into place. So that's how it's gonna go for the rest of them.
well done. So 27 strawberry plants, 11 blueberry bushes. And after today, it's gonna to be very low maintenance. It's just going to be uh, on drip system, so I won't have to come out here and water. I always check. Like every evening we walk around the garden and you know, it's not a, a bad idea, especially when it's really hot, just to look at all your containers, even the ones on drip, to make sure that there wasn't an issue because issues occur and if you don't catch it in time, it can really hurt your plants. So, you know, putting in a drip system doesn't mean you're done forever, but it sure makes it easier. Um, and then I'll put a reminder in my phone for 60 days to go in and apply more, so more soil acidifier. I may have to do it a little bit more often and maybe a little bit heavier because we are so high pH, but that's just something I'll address as I kind of figure it out and kind of go along. But this is just one step closer to having more fruit production here. I mean, we've got the orchard here with nine trees of differing varieties. Uh, we've got the two raspberry beds we just put in. We're putting in a blackberry bed. I've got the um, honey berries going, which you guys, they are so good. I didn't even realize like it's been so long since I've tried one and these produce not very many this year uh, what variety are they the uh, sugar pie and honey bunch uh, but big berries big and they remind me of huckleberries so I actually have uh, my mom searching <laughs> as she's doing plant orders down at the garden center I told her if you see any more varieties of these honey berries come up I would love to plant more because they're part of the honeysuckle family they're really really low maintenance and really tough for our area and they can take our pH so I would really like to amp that up as well but let's just take a little look here I ended up planting one of my blueberry bushes this one here is a patriot in with my Spartan and that's typically what I do um, even though they they tend to want to get bigger I usually plant at least two in one large container and I didn't have enough room for that last one so I just thought well I would leave it in there and I did put soil acidifier in I've got a blue crop and a blue gold so blue crop blue gold in this tub with the strawberries same in this one same in this one <laughs> And then I went ahead and tucked three into this container. So two Spartans, one Patriot. Um, I was going to like, as I got the first one planted, I thought maybe I should just put two per. And then I ended up with these three one gallon ones and I just decided to pop them all in here. Benjamin will find this one tonight and he'll eat it. Mark my words. It was actually so cute. The other day I told Benjamin, hey, I have a surprise for you in the high tunnels. There's a bunch of blueberries that are ripe. So he went in there and his reaction was so cute. Wonderful. Mm. It tastes like blueberry. Does it? Mm, well, that's a pretty good thing, isn't it? Sure thing, I love it. Okay, so now let's go over individual varieties here. So the blue crop, you can see just these massive clusters that are forming. So all of these are high bush again. Uh, the, this one in particular is a zone four through eight and it wants to grow four to six feet tall if it's in the ground. I don't expect it to get that big in here. I expect it to be max probably four by maybe two or three foot wide. Um, but this one, like these are all purpose berries. They can be used for all kinds of different things. In fact, most of these can. I mean, freeze them, fresh pies, all of that kind of thing. These uh, ripen in July typically, so we have a little bit of time left yet. Um, and this one right here at maturity will produce 10 to 20 pounds of fruit if it was allowed to get as big as it wants to get. And this one is blue gold. This one definitely looks taller right now, but it wants to get about the same size as this one, four to six feet tall. Again, I don't think it'll get that big in the container, but the berries appear bigger right, right now at this point. But these are nice and sweet, uh, ripening late June to early July. And then we have this last tub here. The Patriot is the only one that has berries left because Benjamin has been after these. Oh, there's another one right there. Yeah, I'm gonna eat that one right now. Oh, yum. I expect the berries on these now that they're actually planted and not stressed out in their plant cans to be bigger next year. But the um, Patriot wants to grow about three to five feet tall and wide. It's a zone three through seven, so really good for colder areas. This one is semi-fertile, so really good to have next to another variety so that they can cross-pollinate. Um, you just wanna make sure that when you're doing that again, that they are the type that will bloom at the same time and that they're both high bush varieties. And the last variety is Spartan and that's what both of these are. So the one in front and the one back there, zone five through seven, wanting to grow about five to six feet tall. Uh, but these are probably one of the better tasting ones. I think I already mentioned that, that I've tasted, but again, I don't have any experience with the other two that we just went over. 
Uh, so I'm hoping that they all have that super wonderful taste. Uh, but I always have grown Spartans, like ever since I've had my own garden in a container and I've been really happy with them. And they tend to ripen mid-July, but I believe that these are a little bit further ahead because they were stressed. That kind of tends to make plants do weird stuff. So I think they'll all be very happy because they're in light soil that's well draining, but they will have consistent moisture, lots of sun, and hopefully a soil pH that they can handle or deal with, I guess. And I do believe that is it for this video. Now I do wanna talk about blueberry pruning, but I think I'll do that in a separate video because it's a little bit more involved, but it is very important to do it. Um, a lot of people will do it late winter, early spring. They do bear fruit on old wood. So you do wanna keep that in mind, but it is a good idea to get your blueberry shrubs on a very kind of strict pruning regimen so that you always have really prolific stems. Otherwise your plants, if you don't prune on them, they can get really dense, the stems will get weak, um, if there's not a lot of airflow and light to the center of the shrub, then the, the production level just goes way down. So we'll talk about that at a later date, probably when I get ready to prune mine. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Super excited to show you pictures and updates as these hopefully grow and are like the most amazing blueberry bushes ever. That would be amazing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.